This is a very plain background, mate. Have a look at this. Have a I know, look you're at in this. The, you're in the boonies. It's like I mean, you're... The... <laughs> Transition phase, moving, uh, moving house, aka moving office. It just uh, looks like it looks like you're in a really shitty boardroom. That's true. I should have put a or suit like on. A, or like a, um, you know, one of those like a training, like a, a corporate training <laughs> uh, room where there's just like a. Oh, the only difference if I was in that in in that um, situation, I'd have like a camera that zooms in and out and focuses, and yeah. <laughs> they freak me out, man. Anyway, uh, to the point of order, we're here to talk about Cocaine Bear, uh, which we, we saw last night as it was, and we're just going to do a bit of a reaction, and hello to everybody, Glenn and Ben here, you know who we are from the Good Movie Monday podcast. You know what, I have seen reactions to this already, Ben, that f- don't necessarily frustrate me, but perplex me. I think a oh, lot really? of people, I think a lot of people have some kind of inability to adjust or modify their their perception of things and I find that contextualization is out the window. So I've seen quite a few reactions given it sort of one and a half, two stars, you know, really? which which is negative, but you read their opinion and it seems to be how in how much they enjoyed it. And like, you know, it was full of this, it was full of that, and you'll have a great time. And they have to they then have to sort of preface it by saying, you know, it's not great cinema by any means, but you know, you're gonna have a good time. It's like I don't think anyone went into Cocaine Bear thinking it was going to be great cinema, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't get it. Look, I, I feel like I feel like this for me. This is uh, 2023's <laughs> unbearable weight of massive talent. For me. <laughs> like I, I've, I feel like it's already the the best film of the year. Suffice to say, we one. we both fucking loved it. It's going to be my number one film of the year. Uh, I, look, and I will preface that by saying that um, <laughs> before the film, there was a, a slew of trailers uh, that played, and each one of them looked better than the than the, the <laughs> previous one. And I'm like, yes, this is going to – I may have to have a top 20 list this <laughs> year because there's just going to be too many films that are, are awesome. And they're all like – don't get me wrong. They're all shit, but shit <laughs> awesome. Yes, and it, it's, it, it looks like it's shaping up to be the year that they didn't give a fuck, like because these movies kind of feel like un PC, edgy, you know, pushing some envelopes, loving it. Yeah, they just well, they look like it's like genre has just exploded into the uh, atmosphere. Like people are getting sick, even though they still turn out in droves. People are getting sick of these Marvel, DC tentpole kind of franchise films which i mean everything's cyclical it's about time that people kind of lost a bit of interest in those you know three hour epic (laughs) cgi fests and are now kind of starting to get back into the faster paced more uh exploitational more uh uh well basic You know what I? They, you've you've touched on something because I read last week that Kevin Feig from Marvel has admitted they need to slow it down. Like they're just they've lost touch with the audience by just pummeling people with these movies. Um, we had that piece where Spielberg went on the record to say that Maverick pr- practically saved the theatrical industry, which you know I think yeah. I think Maverick probably shook up Marvel and made them reevaluate. So you're onto something with that, which is a good thing for everybody. Hmm. So, Cocaine Bear, let's, um, before we talk about the film itself, talk about the marketing behind this one, because you and I went to the screening last night, and with their popcorn, they gave us a little baggie full of white powder that happened to be salt and vinegar seasoning for the popcorn. I'm just upset that they didn't give it to you on, on a knife, like an entire <laughs> knife full of it. Or just on the table out the front, yeah. A tablespoon of it. And they also gave us an alcoholic beverage, which I had, uh, that was very, very strong. And so the combination of that seasoning and that drink had me buzzing before the movie even started. And I looked at you and I said, what the fuck have they done to this? Because, like, I am pinging right now. It was like like they'd gone back to the days when Coca-Cola was laced with actual cocaine. (laughs) Whatever they did, it worked. The magic was there. And so and I don't I know. I was straight edge. I was straight edge, and I loved every second of it. Okay, what a, what a movie this is like! And I don't mean this in a really patronising way because I do like Elizabeth Banks, but I did not know she had this in her. I loved 
Pitch Perfect 2. I thought that was a really good film. I had a lot of faith in her as a filmmaker, but I didn't think she could deliver something like this because it is off the charts. Yeah, I look, I actually, I liked, uh, did she, she directed Charlie's Angels as well, didn't she? Mm-hmm. Which I, I kind of enjoyed, like, I mean, for what it was. like those From, a, movies from like, a, a filmmaking technical standpoint, yes, I I, I, got, I saw merit in it. I didn't like the movie, but yeah, I think I know, she's I a good filmmaker. She's a good I filmmaker. never look at anything from a making <laughs> merit <laughs> point of view. As now I'm, now I'm being one of those people. It might not be great cinema. <laughs> did I just, did I enjoy <laughs> sitting there for 90 minutes? <clears throat> uh, I did on both of them. Yeah, that's how we've got to uh, I mean, approach everything. I also, I mean, but then again, what, my taste is up my ass. I enjoyed the Power Rangers movie. Oh, that uh, was, but, but that was good. What are we talking? We like we are from the same stable, you and I. So. <laughs> I, did, I did like, and I, as I said last year, my favorite film of last year was Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Uh, you know, that's just the kind of movies I. That's just the kind of movies so, I gravitate towards. The true story of Cocaine Bear, and I like the fact that you know we're not going to spoil anything. Not that there's much to spoil, but the film opens up. Um, with some real actual footage from like the news reports and things like that of what happened. So it starts out pretty much exactly how the real cocaine bear story begins. And then the liberties are taken by the depiction of the bear on cocaine. And it's just a fucking, it's a balls to the wall, fast paced action adventure full of gore. Like it's as gory as all hell. Really, really gory. gory. Yeah. And hilarious. And the music is just pumping. That doesn't relent either. And like every time you can hear that beat picking up, you're like, oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And everyone in it is great. Every, yeah. every, every cast member is perfectly cast in, the, in that role. Uh, and they're all hilarious. Like I, I, when he first turned up, the guy from uh, Modern Family, I was like, oh, I don't know about this guy. Because <laughs> uh, it took me 10 minutes to recognize, where do I know this guy from? <laughs> yeah. Because he's not a ginger really in this. No. Like he like he is in uh, in Modern Family. He's so, a strawberry blonde. He's a, yeah, he's a, he's a redneck. But, uh, he kind of really comes into his own as he gets going. And <laughs> I can never remember a name. It's Margot. I'm sure it's Margot something or another, um, who's the park ranger. She's she's great in everything. The first thing <laughs> the first thing I remember her being in was in Twilight with Paul Newman, where she plays a prostitute. Yeah, that's and right. She, when you once you if you once you know who I'm talking about, is not <laughs> the kind of person you would ever expect to play a prostitute, but she is so she was so good at as the prostitute. Uh, but she's good in she's good in everything. She's good in this as the park ranger. She's good. At, the the three gang members are great. You know, um, the the cop from the city, the cop from the city, is great <laughs> with his little dog. He's great. Ray Liotta is great, and I just love how they the kids bought. Are great. All, the kids I love are how great. they, yeah, the kids are really good. I love how they brought all these characters together. Like you know, just I think the first twenty five minutes is essentially establishing how they all come to be in the park. Yeah, and that's fun. Like you don't see a lot of the bear in that time, but it doesn't matter because like you're having fun with these characters regardless. Yeah. It's and then when yeah, you know, much better than most kind of, and this isn't really a horror film, but like those horror films where you have to try and uh, get you need you need to get enough fodder into the place into the film so you can have a, a bunch of kills. Yeah, so they did it really well. They've done it really effectively. They have brought the fodder in, and then even the guy who also once again his name I don't know, but he's the the big uh, uh, redhead barbarian guy from Game of Thrones, who's like the hitchhiker <laughs> at the start. Are uh, the 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 backpackers? Him and his wife. Yep. Are backpacking in the in the forest and they are pitch perfect excellent like even their fight about their wedding and the band when so he, good. When he takes a bit of cereal good. yeah and the cereal yeah <laughs> yeah oh look it's it's i can't wait to watch it again and and look we can't not talk about the great performance from the cgi bear because it did not matter one iota that it was completely cgi because the mannerisms and the humor in it was just so well executed Look, so much better. That it was so much better than the CGI. I thought than any of those King Kong, Godzilla movies that they've, you know, that they've brought out, or even like, the bear, and, the bear in prey. Like it's better than that. Like that. the thing that that astounds me though is that how can that bear be so? How can that bear look so good? See, <laughs> and yet every single CGI blood effect, for the most part that I've seen, like gunshot wound. <laughs> always looks like absolute shit like surely that's the james cameron james cameron has spent millions of dollars billions of dollars perfecting water make blood work you fucking prick <laughs> i just love how you can 
bring in a James Cameron analogy to nearly every situation. I just love that I just called James Cameron a prick for not to, for not <laughs> fixing CGI blood. Yeah, no. He's, I know. It's his job. <laughs> But you I mean, they could three hours of Avatar, cunt. Fix blood. Well, I mean, the other film, the other filmmakers could just take his CGI water and color grade it red. Fucking oath, they could. Yeah, easy, simple. <laughs> so, but it is a funny movie, and we were in a full cinema that I think everyone in that room embraced it wholeheartedly. Like you know, that's also we... what I don't understand about these negative reviews because Cocaine Bear, I mean, it, it brings out the crowd. Yeah, like everybody wants to wants to see it, and then and then to get all like high and mighty about oh it's lowbrow, entertain. Fuck you. But the thing is, right? They enjoyed it in in their reviews. I'm not going to like point to any particular people, but there's been a few from not only Australia but the states where they just have to preface it by reminding you that this is not good cinema or this is not you know highbrow. It's like we kind of know that by the title, you know. Yeah, oh yeah. What are you expecting from a movie called? Yeah. If you, yeah. The only things I was expecting from the movie called Cocaine Bear is that it would have a bear on cocaine in it, yeah, that's and right. that's and that's exactly what I had. And as I am told by nearly every single Kentuckian I know, because you know we are connected to Kentucky by the boneheads on our show, by a lot of friends from Scarefest, that there's a place over there. I think it's called Kentucky for Kentucky, and it's a big warehouse full of Kentucky memorabilia. It's nostalgic. They have the real stuffed cocaine bear on display there. Wow. Yes. And I'll, I'll I'll link you a photo of one of my friends um, standing beside it. But yes, so I the cocaine bear, you, you can visit it. You can visit it for sure. You should, you should put it up on screen. <laughs> I, I should. Yeah, I will. I will. Okay. I'll get permission from her. <laughs> I've just made you uh, do that work that you didn't really want to use. I just don't want to edit this. I just put yeah, them up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> bang on with that but um well let me just say that the um the woman in the picture is jim varney's niece um the great ernest oh, p worrell fantastic. So there we go. a little bit of extra movie easter eggs for you she should have been in the film <laughs> yes uh ernest should have been in the film <laughs> I mean, ernest would have been great as the park ranger character that would have, <laughs> yeah. the park ranger the um the <clears throat> The guy from Modern Family, his oh, yeah. he'd be good as just it's the bumbling character. Like he could just be one, oh, one, of, the, one of the gang members. It would have been great <laughs> as one of the gang members, even though he's clearly too old. It would have been like Steve Buscemi in that. Uh, well, hey, Ernest always did hang out movie. with kids. Yeah, in right. every movie, he was the camp counselor. He was the you know, yeah, the troop leader, all that kind of stuff. He was never actually playing a kid. He was always playing an adult. He's a man child. Yeah, to play one of the kids, one of the actual, <laughs> you know. In their in their <laughs> too short crop top, you know things or whatever. Like totally, they're... totally didn't expect the conversation to go this way. No, but um, before we wrap it up, just the uh, highlight of the movie for me was definitely the ambulance chase sequence. That was just glorious. Yeah, it's pretty good. And I mean, you get a taste of that in the trailer. So if you liked what you saw in the trailer, you get a whole lot more in the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, and there we go. Ray Liotta's death for me. Uh... Oh. <laughs> that's not a spoiler i suppose it is kind of a spoiler but when you know who the, when you know the character that he plays in the movie it's inevitable yes yeah, to, totally anything like it, but it is excellent yeah <laughs> so there we go uh contender for best film of the year <laughs> like they're gonna have to you know they're gonna have to up their game if they're gonna top that for me as if as if i'm the because uh, i'm a member of the academy in my opinion well, renfield is on its way sir fuck i can't wait for that <laughs> and that dog movie, and that uh, that Indian wedding movie with the John Wickness to it. Yeah, Matrix meets excellent. fucking I don't know, monsoon wedding. <laughs> yeah, fucking oh, bring it on! It looks great. <laughs> awesome. All right, man. I'm I'm going to wrap it here and go find that bloody photo so I can just put it on the screen for people. You know, Fantastic. As if I had nothing better to do. All right. <laughs> the show's back soon, March first, everybody. No, March six. March six. Not much first. Yeah. I was. I don't even know what I'm talking about. The, uh, <laughs> yeah. I got so excited. <laughs> yes. I don't even know. Uh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't done any prep for the show. The return of the show. It's like it's going to be like almost like a, a regular episode. 